Thank you guys. Have a good lunch. of um, the files. There is another example of this special paired uh, character style uh, in this, which is in the dialogue, but we're not going to go over that in the interest of time because it's the same idea. You apply the paragraph style, and then within that paragraph style, you apply the special character style. And so we're going to go all the way up to the top of our document. On a PC, um, just a useful shortcut, Control Home takes you right to the top of the document. Uh, Control N takes you to the end. That should help uh, whenever you're scrolling through and you need to go back up um, or to the end of the document. So that's Control Home and Control N for uh, the top of the document or end of the document respectively, right? So we are now on step eight of the composition procedure, right? And so we are getting to this point where where we've gotten everything mostly composed um, but you know we still have some things missing right in this case um, we see that the front matter as we discussed earlier right does not have any of those you know uh, PT for pair uh, for part title uh, UT for unit title or CT uh, for chapter title uh, um, paragraphs and because of that the hub might treat this entire section all the way up to um, all the way up to the table of contents as if it were one section of the book and we know it's not we know that each of these have their own distinctions and so we're going to go ahead and add uh, structure indicators to tell the hub this is a section of the rest of the document so uh, this is the series page Right? And so this is one section that is different and separate from the title page here. So the way that you add structure indicators, and this is where we left off in our uh, training from last class, right, is you would highlight the text that needs to be um, encased in the structure indicator tags. Right? So you would highlight that text and you would go to insert structure indicator and that will bring down a list of all the different structure indicators that um, are available we're going to focus primarily on the chapter for um, structure indicator for the purposes of this tutorial but there are other options uh, for why uh, for um, other instances where you would need to indicate to the hub that something is a specific section um, so now we're here at insert structure indicators Right, we're going to move down to chapter and we're going to just click on chapter and automatically what the hub will do much like it does with the queries or the image queries you would you see that the, uh, the SAI has gone ahead and added a begin chapter um, a query here that's what this little question mark is and then applied the structure style to it and it has done the same thing for end chapter and apply the structure tag here, right? And to just give you a big picture of how this works, um, I think Tim is going to go exactly to where I go about to, yeah. to him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just break in to sort of contextualize what we're doing a little bit. So, mm -hmm. um, it may seem it may seem a little strange because in in Word and a lot of things, we're just used to putting in like we have here those page breaks, so that a person can look at a document and actually like see okay, this is where the series page ends. So this is where the copyright text ends and then a title page begins. So, you know, isn't, isn't that enough? Um, not in this system. What we're doing right here is establishing something that's going to um, affect how the rest of the document works. So when we put in these begin and end chapter breaks, not only is it telling um, a user or an editor or an author where these page breaks are going to happen, but this is where the document is going to be split into separate HTML files in the ebook so that you have proper page breaks in your ebook. Um, it's also where um, in your XML file, you're going to have similar beginning and ending chapter tags so that in that um, archival file, you, you, you have those chapter breaks. Like Elvis said, uh, there are things that are inherently structural that are going to be uh, already associated with these breaks in the content, like in the HTML files. That would be things like he mentioned CT, um, you know, chapter number, chapter title, et cetera. But because front matter can kind of vary, you know, you may have 
three different series on a series page. So we don't want to say, well, every time there's a series title, we're going to make that a new chapter. Um, you could have a title page that starts with a series title and then a book title or maybe an author name and then a book title. So because things are a little bit more complex in where they start and where they end, um, none of those things are inherently structural like chapter number or title are. So that's why we're coming in here and um, very much so in the front matter, that's kind of defining where these breaks are. Um, so I hope that helps clear up kind of like why we do this extra step, why page breaks aren't enough and why uh, there's like this extra step in the process. And apply our structure indicators to the rest of the front matter. So the reason I know, right, this document, thankfully has our nice little page breaks here to indicate which sections are which. But let's say you have a document that does not have these page breaks um, and you need to know what section is which. This is where knowing the parts of the book um, helps um, because you know that a title page is composed of, you know, the title, a subtitle, you know, the publisher, uh, sometimes the author, um, you know, and then the publisher logo or something like that. Um, so um, you would want to familiarize yourself with parts of the book in order to be able to tell uh, where these section breaks should um, exist um, if you don't have these handy page breaks uh, to guide you, right? So that's part of the reason why we're leaving them in there so that it can guide us for now. Remember when we're composing, we're trying to not remove things until the very end where we are essentially wiping away uh, the things that we do not need. But oftentimes, like for example, a way that you can tell um, a paragraph a section break or an unornamented uh, section break, they're both the same thing, um, would be because the you know, the author inserted an extra return uh, after the last paragraph to create that space, right? And so you wouldn't want to get rid of that right away. So again, to go back to that question from Mark, uh, we'll get to that point uh, where we remove everything, but that's at the end when we're ready to um, refine our document. So we're going to go ahead and add our chapter structure indicators here because this is the title page. Then I'm going to look down here and I'll see that this is the copyright page and it ends at the print line. So I know that the dedication is different. So I will make sure to add the structure indicator here to keep the copyright page separate from the dedication line and everything else. And then the dedication line is on its own page. Thus, we're going to insert chapter structure indicators there. Right, right. And so, at this point, right, we've inserted our structure indicators throughout our document. There is no other uh, place where we need to insert it in this document. Now, um, we're not going to go too in-depth into this here, but I have in the syllabus um, linked to a further explanation of structure indicators. Um, let me just make sure that that made it through live. Actually, there's a little extra thing there. Um, I'll fix that once we're done. But under the further reading section under class three, there's a link to the structure indicators documentation on our site and that will go in depth into um, the other uses of structure indicators uh, here. Right, and there is no need to insert um, the structure indicator for the main body of the TOC because we have made this CTFM and the hub will recognize and say, okay, this is actually a section because it has that CT paragraph style for chapter title. So thank you, Anita, for that question. Do we have any follow-ups to that? Anybody seeing? If you had references at the end of the chapter. Um, if you wanted the references to exist as their um, own separate chapter for whatever that reason might be, then you would use it in that instance. Um, or for example, and you'll read this in the documentation. If for if there is something here, um, let's just make make something up, and that you will probably never run into this. But you'll have some text here that should be included as part of the table of contents, but the chapter title actually occurs after this. Then you would want to insert the chapter. Um, uh, structure indicators there to make sure that this goes uh, along with the um, table of contents or the chapter title, if that makes sense. Is that clear? Yeah. 
you know, so I'll just say this is one of those things where we're going to go into the refiner in just a little bit. And we have to know that what the refiner is going to do. And that will help us with our um, composition task. So like Elvis said, in this particular instance, if you have a chapter that is, like starts with an epigraph and not uh, a CT FM as we have here, what's going to happen is that the hub is going to kind of like chop things into different files, into different chapter breaks. And epigraph isn't something that normally starts a chapter. So it's going to hit that epigraph and say, well, that's not, that's fine. I don't need to make that break. And then it'll hit a CTFM, something that is inherently structural. And it'll say, okay, so this is the start of a chapter. So here, because we're preparing ourselves for that, like we know that behavior of the hub, we have to come in and say, well, I want this all to stay together. So I'm going to introduce chapter tags that start above that epigraph and continue to the end of the chapter so that the hub doesn't supersede what we want. Um, where we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that because really with working with the refiner, we're, we're changing our approach um, based on its behavior. So I hope that kind of explains why in this one instance that Elvis is describing, you would want to introduce chapter tags around something that already has a chapter title associated with it because we're trying to prepare for what the hub was going to do. Right. Cause a lot of it is looking for um, common things that you would find like chapters start with the chapter number or chapter title. And if a book kind of like breaks from that expected format that we need to, we need to compensate for that in some way. And the structure tags are a tool that we use to do that. Correct. And, and um, just to highlight what Anita said, um, you know, if you do this, once we, let's say we take and we add, you know, structure indicators across this because this upper craft needs to be part of the table of contents, right? So we'll go ahead and do that just as to show you. Then this epigraph would be the first thing on that page rather than the chapter title. So it would override that. So let's undo that change because that will not be good. So we're just undo it. By the way, all I did there was hit control Z. Uh, that's the standard shortcut for undo in Word, um, at least on PC. Um, familiarize yourself with, with it. It is your friend. So so um, I saw that Sophie asked like how we should command Z on Mac. Thank you, Tim, uh, Mac expert over there. So um, we'll, uh, I saw Sophie's question about how to set uh, page breaks. So we don't want to actually introduce uh, page breaks because we are going to get rid of them. These are already in here because that's the way the document was set to us. So you don't actually want to uh, set uh, page breaks in there um, into your document now. Um, not to dis, uh, discount the question. Now, if you want to, to know how to do that, I can show you that, but apart from the, from the class. Uh, but again, remember, it is not necessary to insert page breaks uh, into your document um, because, again, the structure indicators sort of take care of, of, of these certain things. So um, at this point, right, we've got one new message. Okay, great. All right, so at this point, we've inserted our... Um, structure indicators, right? And so now we're ready to do, uh, to jump to step nine in the composition procedure, which is running the cleanup options. And this is where uh, I was discussing earlier that we're gonna get rid of all these extra paragraphs and uh, er, extra paragraph, empty paragraphs, not content uh, and page breaks and all these, right? So we're gonna go up here. We've gone through, inserted our structure indicators, right? You, do, you don't have to scroll to the top of the document. You can actually run this from anywhere. Um, that's just a personal habit of mine. So that's why I scroll to the top. You go to the SAI and go to cleanup. And let's bring this up. Again, remember in a single screen setup, it won't be coming in from the right. It'll just pop open. So we're, gonna, we're not going to click rendering again because we've already done this, right? So we're going to, let's say we need to change all underlines to italics. We can click that. In this case, we don't need to do that, right? All we're going to do is we're going to clean the note markers because I want the spaces around um, the... Um, the EndNote references to not be styled as ENREF or anything like that. That's for ENREF or EndNote reference um, because that can cause some issues. So I'm going to have select that. I'm not going to associate styles, right? And so I'm going to jump down here to the space and break cleanup, right? What this 
option will do spaces. It'll reduce double spaces to one. Um, the paragraph cleanup will, and that's a simplistic view. I'm not just going to go into um, incredible details about what it does. Um, again, remember that if you hover over any of these options, a little pop-up will appear uh, that'll tell you exactly what that option will do, right, in the SAI. So spaces will reduce uh, extra spaces, right, um, and spaces that are before um, um, or after paragraph breaks and tabs, um, and uh, double spaces to one space. Uh, paragraphs will delete empty um, paragraphs, or well, you could also say it's deleting uh, multiple paragraph breaks, so we'll get rid of that. And tabs will get rid of all tabs um, in the document. The reason we get rid of all tabs is because tabs, once you move out of Word, they don't really mean anything. They're just treated as a regular space. Um, so uh, once you have already defined everything in uh, composition, right, and define all your indentation using the one styles or one, two, three styles, better said, then you don't have a need for the tab, so we're going to get rid of them. And down here you have the option to get rid of extra breaks, and we're going to select the page break, and this will go through the document and remove all page breaks. So now that we've set this up to clean up our document um, this way, we can just go ahead and hit OK. And again, you can do any combination of, you know, you can run rendering again if you'd like. Again, it won't do anything um, unless you've added new content that needs the rendering um, option selected. If you want to go ahead and change all underlying text to italic, you can do that. Uh, and you can run any combination of these during cleanup. These are just sort of the basic ones. Composition cleanup and space and break cleanup. We're going to hit OK. And we'll see that the document will go through. It'll say clean up complete. You'll see, hey, look, our page breaks are still there. But once you hit OK, our page breaks are gone. And if we go through the document, now you'll see that there's no extra paragraph breaks. Things are looking a lot cleaner. Um, this document was already clean to begin with, but that um, cleanup option sort of uh, gets rid of all these things that may cause some issues with the hub later. See, so I'm just scrolling through and then we got to that. And we have, the cleanup does add this last um, paragraph here. We can just remove that because we don't need that. So uh, we'll scroll to the document and remove that last um, break. The SAI just tends to do that, uh, add that one at the end of the document when you run cleanup. Um, do we have any questions up to this point? 